everybody. I just want to ask you five questions. Uh, the first question is, do you want your children to be Uber drivers for Chinese tourists? So what you may be not aware of is that we are in a self-defense situation in Europe between Trumpistan and China. And if you look at AI risks, they come in different predictive horizons. The most the best documented risk is with the predictive high horizon of 2030, and it has to do with massive unemployment through old-fashioned automatization. So we will face a steeper income gradient, increased inequality in society, dangerous patterns of social stratification, parallel societies. There are some studies who predict that 47% of the jobs in North America might be lost by 2030. This could go along with extensive wage cuts, a collapse of income tax, pressure on social security systems. Um, might lead to um, populism and all the things you know. So the first thing is we shouldn't fool ourselves we are in a very critical historical transition. AI is not a technology. It's a meta-technology that makes many other technologies better, and we are caught in the middle. And that self-defense situation in Europe means two things, basically. We have to defend the European way of life. We have to defend freedom of speech, human rights, privacy, democratic standards. And in a situation where the two main actors on the planet do not share our values anymore. So there is a simpler version of this. Very simple and down to the ground. We also have to defend our standard of living in this situation. This whole situation is also an economic challenge because unemployment will lead to populism and social unrest later. So bottom line is, <clears throat> for many reasons, we have to get this AI thing right. Here's my second question to you. Do you want autonomous lethal weapon systems in Europe? For example, killer drones that decide who to kill all by themselves. Analysts say there is a historical new level of the arms race between US and China above nuclear arms, and it has probably started 2010. It would be in the interest of Europe and Germany to dampen down this arms race on the level of artificial intelligence, but it's probably much too late. So I think offensive autonomous weapon systems should be banned and not be funded on European territory. The European Parliament has said the same thing. 28 countries have said they will not get into this and not develop AI weapons. Germany is not among these countries. So what is special? Special is that AI weapons are ever faster the reaction times, the time windows become smaller. You have to take humans out of the loop. Um, in the end, the systems will have to make military decisions all by themselves. If you want to call up a general at quarter to three in the night and ask for a decision, you have lost the war. So um, my question to you is, what do you want and what do you not want in terms of military applications of artificial intelligence. It is you, civil society, who has to make clear what kinds of military applications of AI you want in this country and which ones you don't want. The government will protect the interests of the arms industry. The impulse has to come not out of the political institutions or economy, but out of the public sector. So my second question for you is, what kinds of wars do you want to have in the future? Here's my third question. Do you want research that aims at creating artificial consciousness? 
That's my own field of research. I'm one of the guys who founded the Association for the Scientific Study of Consciousness. I'm in this field for 35 years. Everybody should understand in this room and every politician should understand that there is a difference between artificial intelligence and artificial consciousness. Synthetic phenomenology, as it is also cause, called, Artificial consciousness would mean real feeling, that it is something like to be that machine, an inward perspective, a sense of self. So I am very nervous about this, because most people think this is just science fiction, but there are already four labs in the world who actually try to realize artificial consciousness. They are esteemed colleagues of mine. I respect them. I know these people, and they're very smart. And I think that is something that should never happen for many reasons. One reason being that we could create artificial suffering, possibly in a very large number in cascades of copies or backup copies with conscious self models. So I think we shouldn't go there, and I have asked for a global moratorium on synthetic phenomenology until 2050. I think we shouldn't even risk, recklessly risk, the creation of artificial consciousness, inner experiences, unless we really know what we're doing, and there should be a ban on this kind of research because we don't want to trigger a second-order conscious evolution on this planet that gets out of control. All of this is science fiction. That's what the industry says. That is no argument. Standard action theory tells you if the future damage is very high, even if there's a low probability of that actually happening, it is rational to invest resources into risk minimization right now. We all have to begin to think about the problem of artificial consciousness right now. Here's my fourth question for you. What is your positive vision? What do you want to do with AI? What do you want AI to do for you? One thing we have to do is we have to get away from all these negative scenarios, killer robots and so on. What we have to create is a positive global vision. We need an ethical approach that is global, that includes the fund foundational values not only of Western countries, but also Chinese values like harmony, compassion, or mindfulness. And that's a major job that has to be done by this generation. So what we need is a good independent ethics for AI. How many of you have heard the concept of ethics washing? You know what green washing is? I've seen, in the last one and a half years in Brussels, I've seen what ethics washing is. That's when Google and all the big companies create ethical debates and ethical rules which they publish. The goal is to avoid enforceable law and any kind of regulation. So they try to do something that is not fake news, but fake ethics some non-binding rules they publish so they can postpone law and legitimate con control by the society. That's what ethics washing is, and it's currently happening everywhere. We have about 80 sets of ethics rules on the planet, and most of them are created by the industry to stop lawmakers. Many good things are going to come to you, I think it's unethical not to use AI. Don't get me wrong, we don't want to stifle innovation, and we need AI to fight climate change, to defend the common good, for evidence-based social engineering, and maybe we can even use artificial intelligence to make democracy better than it is right now, more efficient and more transparent. 
So the question is, what is your positive vision? And that brings me to the last question I want to ask you, maybe later discuss with you. Will you defend the German Constitution under this pressure from the US and China? I don't know if you've noticed it. So far in the history of mankind, democracy, human rights, and technological leadership was always going hand in hand. This is now changing. If a non-democratic actor like China wins the global AI race, then your children will become Uber drivers for Chinese tourists. And uh, you know what we see in China right now is something we haven't seen in the history of mankind. Totalitarianism 2-0. And if non-democratic entities win this AI race, they will spread totalitarianism 2-0 all over the planet. So I think the biggest problem we have is digital sovereignty in Germany. We are not a sovereign state. You have seen three weeks ago that Microsoft and Google will actually do what Donald Trump tells them to do. You know, with the Android updates for Huawei, with the tech war that has started. But what nobody sees is that all German universities the whole government, all of the German administration, runs on Microsoft Windows with a lot of backdoors. Donald Trump can actually shut down this country at any point in time, and nobody seems to care about this. So we are not a sovereign state, and we have to regain this. It's now 30 years since the wall has come down, and you know we still have many problems. But I think what we need is a new kind of constitutional patriotism in this new situation. Digitaler Verfassungspatriotismus. Uh, a post-nationalist identity we create for the age of artificial intelligence. Don't look for the German government for this. You have to do it. Civil society has to do it. You have to think about what ethical rules you want for AI, and we have to somehow do it all together. Climate change and artificial intelligence and its rise, rise are actually two very different things. But they have one thing in common. Just like climate change, AI will not go away. This will be with you until the end of your life. Thank you very much.